Okay, so it's time now. So let's get started. So welcome everyone, and uh, thank you for joining this session, um, our workshop, or uh, what we are going to do today. We are going to go into the journey of a user or a customer in banking. So we will see what are different uh, uh, pain points, why where a customer needs uh, a bank support or where a bank can proactively help uh, their customer to have a better journey or better uh, user experience and what technologies are available right now and what different things or different uh, uh, functionalities uh, are uh, available, what uh, different products can do and how to think about a user journey and taking an outside in approach for solving any solution uh, rather than just uh, thinking about uh, uh, making your applications uh, visible to outside world, you should be uh, thinking a little bit broader and uh, thinking about uh, um, how it is going to impact your customer. So before we get any further, so let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Harish Kumar. And I work as a solution architect at Google. So um, I have been in integration and API uh, ecosystem or working with APIs for over 10 years now. Um, I joined Google around three years ago. Since then, I have been working for uh, uh, Google Cloud and Apigee and helping customer uh, solve and implement API ecosystem, API strategy uh, in their uh, organization. And I love outdoor. I absolutely love going to camping and uh, work, working out. And um, I'm also black belt in Taekwondo. And I do speak around five languages. I can speak Japanese, Hindi, English, and few other uh, local Indian languages. And as you can tell, I'm from India. So this is our agenda. Very briefly, we will see uh, what is uh, banking journey looks like. What is uh, uh, what are we going to do, and uh, um, where what uh, what is basic difference between an API management and an API gateway? Because um, over my experience uh, for last eight nine years, every time we start having this conversation about uh, um, implementing an API, this always comes up an API gateway or an API management uh, kind of discussion. So we will have a look uh, what, what's the difference between them and uh, we will see some real world successful cases and then uh, we will also see um, how you can manage those APIs and uh, what are the things you should consider even before selecting a product or an API management product and what all functionality it should provide out of the box and uh, what kind of freedom it should give you to solve and uh, control your API ecosystem. So next, why are we even talking about it? So what is the um, different companies or different banks are saying right now? So these are the expert, some uh, snippets out of different uh, uh, banking organizations uh, from their annual report. So um, I'm just going to read a little bit, uh, not everything, but just uh, to give you a little idea uh, what, how are banks thinking about. So as we, as you all know, there are a lot of virtual banking uh, banks coming in. So a virtual bank is basically a bank which doesn't have a physical branch. So uh, you download their app, you interact with them over online, you do your transaction interaction, which, which is um, giving you better, uh, customer experience. And in fact, because of these virtual banks uh, um, getting out there in the market, they are market disruptors and they are challenging current incumbent in banking, like big banks who are not able to change or pivot very quickly and uh, give similar kind of uh, customer experience. It's a digital age, we all know it. So uh, most of the times, whenever uh, you want to interact with someone or uh, some company or some bank, we always look for some automate, automated uh, uh, chatbot or maybe some online service where we can do a self-service ourselves. 
rather than going to a bank and asking a cashier or a teller or somebody at the bank to help us out and uh, do our uh, provide some customer service. And what these digital banks are also doing, uh, virtual banks are also doing, behind the scenes, they are able to collect a lot of uh, data and uh, use artificial intelligence, uh, AI and machine learning and deliver a better differentiated customer experience. And they are able to integrate themselves over the complete customer user journey. And they are able to uh, provide a service where customer doesn't even have to think about uh, banking in, in their uh, life cycle or whatever uh, they're trying to implement. And we will see uh, a custom, basic customer journey in uh, where uh, I will demo you and show you um, where banks can come in. And also, um, a lot of these new channels and mobile applications and uh, um, are able to open up their uh, infrastructure or open up their ecosystem to third party services. So uh, you are able to go to these virtual banks or digital banking if you want to book an Uber, if you want to uh, order some food, you are able to do it from one place. So that is what uh, a good customer service looks like where customer doesn't even have to think about uh, uh, some security because uh, what I mean by security is like, uh, let's say I want to, uh, okay, let's say uh, if I wanted to plan and go to Dubai for this uh, API days conference, so there are a lot of things which I need to think about. I need to think about how, where do I go and book my flight? How do I book a hotel? How do I need insurance? Do I need to pay for insurance? What kind of insurance is available? Or how do I book a cab or an uh, Ola or Uber? And how do I get from airport to uh, my hotel? Or how do I get from my hotel to conference uh, uh, center? or uh, different kind of uh, local visits if I want to go and travel and see Dubai itself. Like, uh, um, where do I go? What do I do? What kind of weather it is? Do What kind of clothes should I carry? So there are a lot of things involved here. And as a customer, I want all these to be simplified and made it easier. Where, and, and also from the bank's perspective, you also want to get involved in all these decisions. What, why? Because it will give you much more better capability of controlling the interaction and getting and collecting a lot of data and giving a better customer experience uh, at the first place. As you can see, this, this uh, whole journey is very scattered and uh, it's uh, involving a lot of third party system, a lot of banking system, a lot of credit card payments, or a lot of payments which I need to do and I have to think about is, am, am I using my credit card at the correct place? Is it my, secure to use my credit card here? Or do I need to worry about some fraud uh, uh, happening and uh, because of my usage of my credit card? And then also um, as a bank, because if I'm not involved in all these touch points, which a customer is doing, I'm losing a lot of uh, different transactions where I could have earned some money or where I could have made some money or I could have collected some data so that I can uh, give a better experience. Maybe my customer is uh, traveling a lot. Maybe I can offer them a better uh, credit card with more uh, travel uh, features or maybe my customer is a foodie or who likes to eat some food uh, at different places. Maybe we can offer them some uh, uh, different kind of uh, uh, vouchers for different uh, third party providers or vendors who we have already contracted with or there could be uh, n number of permutation and combination. And then the most important part is customer retention or the stickiness of customer uh, to stay with a uh, one banking provider. So as in previous slide, we saw that <clears throat> a lot of these digital banks are coming. So, and a lot of uh, uh, customers are moving from one bank to another. How do you make sure that your customer is with you? How is it that that customer always chooses your service over someone else? So, at the end of the day, everything is a banking. But what is the differentiator? The differentiator is the customer experience or how easy it is to interact with a bank, or how easy it is for me to use a credit card or uh, different banking uh, facilities which uh, my bank is providing. And 
most of the time, the answer to these is the first interaction or the easiest way is to create a bot who is able to do a lot of things, a lot of functionalities where these interactions are streamlined and easy to do. And uh, today's uh, example or the demo, which we will see, is also uh, uh, focused on this. And uh, like a bot should be able to do some credit card transactions, some op open up a new fixed deposit account for me. If I want to apply for a loan, that bot should be able to have my information and send it my application through. Or if I want to pay my bill, my electricity bill, my water bill, it should be intelligent enough to do it or handle it for me. Or uh, also uh, suggest me some new suggestion that every month you are coming and asking the bot or the bank to pay. Uh, do you want a standing uh, outstanding uh, payment uh, statement which should automatically pay your bill? Or maybe if there was some uh, unforeseen or a fraud detected on your credit card or on your banking, it should be able to alert you. It should be able to give you option that you should be able to uh, block it. So now we will see how all this can be done. Um, and um, it's easy to say that let's build a bot. Uh, so uh, that bot should be able to do all these things. Now, uh, we, um, we will see one example. And uh, there are a lot of technology behind this because you have to think about how this natural language processing will work, how your speech to text will work, because this bot, this bot should be able to uh, understand what my customer is saying. Uh, if my customer is uh, typing to me or sending a message or is he directly speaking to me or um, all these things we will see and we will check and uh, we will work with and uh, the demo we will see here. So what I'm going to do, I'm not able to share. Let me share my full screen. Just give me one second. I, I was on mute. So right now, what I have built, I have built a chatbot uh, using Google's uh, Dialogflow technology. So I will show you what are the different technologies and uh, uh, different products behind this. But first of all, let's let's uh, uh, try to run it and see uh, what is possible with it. So uh, this, what you see right now, it's a, um, a test uh, emulator or the simulator, which uh, basically will be similar to when I pick up my phone and say, uh, talk to Apigee Bank or talk to this bank or that bank or talk, uh, get me interacted with my customer service. So let's do that. I'm, and hopefully you will be able to hear what my bot is saying. So let me just make it a little bigger. And I'm going to say, talk to Apigee Bank. All right, let's get the test version of Apigee Bank. Hi, how can I help you today? So I'm going to say um, why I am here and what I'm going to do. So let's say I want to go to Dubai. So I could have also spoken it, but I'm just typing it because it will be easier. I missed what you said. Oh. Say it again. Oh, OK. So. I want to plan for Dubai. Before we proceed any further, in order to validate who you are, I'll just need to get your name from Google. Is that OK? So what's happening here is even before my bot uh, is going to interact with me or give me access to a uh, different uh, secured uh, system or application or services behind, it's going to authenticate and ask me that, uh, do I, can I get your information? Okay, are you able to authenticate yourself? If you are not, so what it also means is you can have different uh, services sitting behind. Some can be open for any new customer, new uh, who is coming and maybe trying to open an account. You do not want to uh, secure that behind an authenticated uh, uh, resource or you can have an actual customer who wants to do some transaction. So all those you want to secure behind. So that is where uh, this uh, uh, different interactions can be controlled. So what I'm going to say is uh, yes. 
Hi, Harish. Welcome back. Where do you want to go? So now uh, it is able to uh, uh, verify that I am uh, the correct customer. And uh, I now I'm going to say that I want to go to Dubai. I want to plan for Dubai. So let's say that again. Hi, Harish. Welcome back. Oh. Where do you want to go? Mm, so demo gods are not with me. I want to travel to Dubai. Hopefully it will work. <laughs> Hi, Harish. Welcome oh. back. Where do you want to go? So let's see. Now what is happening is I think something is wrong with my proxy, which is running. So let's see what is happening here. So this also gives me an opportunity uh, to see what is happening behind here uh, to my fulfillment. So any bot is useless if there is nothing uh, behind the scenes running and uh, accessing it or uh, giving it services which it can run and uh, talk to. So uh, that is where, where APG is coming into picture and APG is trying to... Um, APG is my API management platform, which is uh, giving or connecting my bot to my backend services. So uh, let's see uh, if my travel to Dubai, hopefully it will work. It was working till yesterday. So what is going to happen is it's going Hi, to send Harish. this request. Welcome back. Anyhow. Where so, do you want to go? So right now, uh, my request ends up in my uh, APG API proxy. And from my proxy, it's able to go and uh, send some data or response back. So uh, every time it is sending it to wrong place. So it, it so this response is coming from my backend service. It's not exactly from my chatbot. Or uh, why it is important is I'm able to control different uh, interactions. Uh, like I'm able to send my customer if it's authenticated or not. Or so all these authentication authorization is controlled from APG. So APG is sitting in front and giving you this uh, control and governance over different uh, services and APIs which you're exposing. So today, uh, uh, plan travel to Dubai. So this is last try. If it doesn't work, I will just directly show you what other technologies uh, which is. So, but you get the idea that this is what is going Hi, to happen. Hi, Harish. Okay. Welcome back. So today, Where do you want uh, demo, to go? demos are not with, demo gods are not happy with me. Uh, they are not helping me to show my demo. So anyhow, that's not the important part. The important part is what are the different um, um, technologies behind and doing and uh, controlling this interaction. So as you can see, my customer comes in and talks to my bot. But the bot is basically useless if it is not able to connect to my backend services. What are my backend services? So there are a lot of code banking systems, or maybe I am connecting to third party applications like uh, Google Map, or maybe some weather services, or some communication uh, services, or taxi service, hotel service. So all these are external and internal services which I want to provide to customer. But as you can imagine, uh, there are a lot of uh, downstream backend services or systems which I need to interact with, which also brings in a, a problem that I need to govern it much better. I need to secure it and I need to control what I am exposing to my uh, outside world or uh, even the bot, or maybe there will be a web application sitting in front from there, uh, this interaction is happening, or maybe there is some mobile application uh, from where. Uh, this interaction is happening. So everything needs to be controlled and governed and uh, exposed uh, securely. So that is where your API management layer comes in. And this API management layer is going to give you capabilities of uh, exposing your services in a secure, governed way. And it is going to provide you systems. Uh, um, let's let's uh, jump to this part. Uh, what is uh, API management and what is the API gateway? So a lot of time, as I was saying uh, over, our, over my interactions with customers, what happens is uh, whenever um, I talk about uh, API management, the first thought comes to people's mind is, is, aren't you talking about API gateway? 
to be honest, no, because API gateway is basically a subset of a bigger picture of API management itself. So in a typical scenario, uh, API management will give you a basic authentication or authorization, or maybe some kind of uh, mediation policies or mediation or some caching you can do. You can do a little bit of traffic management, but that is not what uh, API management is. So whenever you are there and going to choose API management, um, think of different uh, uh, pillars which any API management platform should support. And uh, if it is not, then there is something uh, missing in a solution which you are selecting. So let's see what are these pillars in an API management. The first thing is a developer management or the developer interaction which you want to control. Now, what is a developer management is? So whenever you're creating an API or whenever you are exposing an API, the end goal or the end user for your API is not directly the end customer of your organization. What I mean by that? So let's say I am a bank customer. I'm using the, uh, their mobile application or a chatbot, and I'm talking and interacting with this uh, application which uh, bank has provided. But who is exactly using this API? The APIs are used by the API consumer or the developers who are interacting and consuming and using your APIs. So you need to think about how those um, developers and API consumers are going to use your uh, APIs. So where are they going to go and see what kind of uh, requests look like? What is the response look like? Um, what kind of authentication you have? What kind of documentation you are providing? Can they get a self-service uh, developer onboarding? Do, need, do they need to come and interact with uh, someone and get uh, their uh, questions answered? Is there uh, some easy way to interact with all the APIs which you're providing? What kind of versioning you have? So there is, all these things uh, basically comes in as a, a developer management. For example, let's say if you want to use some uh, Google API, maybe Maps or um, Google Drive or Photos or whatever API you are trying to use. So you are not directly going to Google and asking that, uh, okay, can you show me this, that, and all. So you go to a developer uh, portal. So where you see what kind of uh, request is, what is response is. So that is where, and then if you want to use it, you want to try it, just see, to send a sample request to a sandboxed environment. So that all these uh, uh, life cycle of a developer management is basic necessity of an API management platform, but it is not required in an API gateway. Now, the next thing which is most important for an API management is <coughs> um, analytics. Why this is important is, as I was saying, you might be using a lot of uh, downstream systems or applications uh, where you're connecting. Now you need to, and you have to collect a lot of uh, analytics and uh, you have to uh, collect a lot of metrics so that you know what is your APIs are doing. Is anybody even using your API or have you released some API which is just giving um, 404 not found error or some kind of uh, different uh, authentication error even though customer is sending or the API consumer is sending proper uh, uh, authentication profile to your APIs. So all these uh, different uh, user end user analytics or tracing or diagnostic should be part of an API management platform and it should make it easier so that if you are using some other system to correlate and to do this dashboarding, maybe you're using Grafana or Prometheus uh, as your central uh, system of analytics, it should give you capability to move all this information out of your API management layer and uh, give you option to build this uh, streamlined uh, uh, dashboards and uh, uh, operational uh, monitoring systems. And then when, when, while I'm talking about operation, any API management platform should also provide you an uh, option to automate things. You should not be sitting there and uh, uh, going to a console or the console which I was showing or like uh, this, like you, know, you should not be coming here and writing stuff here and uh, creating APIs and proxies and you should not be doing your development here, right? So it should be able to provide you capability of automating things, uh, infrastructure level, API level, 
and uh, also management of your uh, APIs, what you're exposing, what you don't want to expose, if you want to create a new version. So everything should be controlled with that. And then um, the third or the fourth pillar, which uh, is also important is for the API developers within your organization itself as an API provider. If uh, you should be able to get um, um, maybe ID interaction or it should be able to connect to your ID seamlessly and do uh, uh, provide you an emulator where you can run your proxies or your APIs so that you can see how your APIs are behaving. Now, at the lower end here at the base, uh, you can see some uh, um, functionalities. It is not. I, I will go uh, as far as saying that it is not a 100% uh, mandatory, but it is a necessity right now uh, for uh, any APIs. Like you, your API management platform should be able to provide you OSAP threat protection or maybe DDoS protection or uh, a WAF layer in front of your uh, APIs and uh, give you AI ML capabilities so that it can learn from the traffic which is coming in and control and uh, alert you if something wrong is going on and rather than uh, going and uh, like reactively controlling or uh, protecting it should be actively protecting your uh, api's ecosystem and then you should be able to take your api management uh, to wherever your uh, backend services are running what it means is it should there should be a capability of doing hybrid deployment so what this means, oops, what this means is um, if you are running your backend services in a public cloud, your API management should be able to run there. Uh, if you want to run it as a SaaS service, it should be able to run it as a SaaS service. Or if you have some um, um, data residency uh, requirements, or if you cannot take data out of your data center, so your API management layer should be able to run it on premise near to your uh, federated uh, uh, ecosystem of uh, backend services. Or if I want to run it as a private cloud, I should be able to run it as a private cloud. So this is these are few functionalities which are absolutely required within an, an API management layer. So now let's, let's go and see what are a few examples of uh, when I was talking about this uh, uh, API layer or the dialogue flow interaction which is happening. So I very quickly want to show you uh, what are, uh, what, how I built it. It didn't run, but it was running till yesterday. That's a typical uh, demo answer which I can give. So uh, anyhow, so the first interaction, what was happening was uh, I was using this Dialogflow uh, CX. This is a Google's uh, product which is interacting and providing me out of the box services like natural language processing, speech to text, text to speech, and all those things. And I can do drag and drop uh, and create the whole flow. Uh, similar to this, uh, like I can start, I can start planning trip, it can book me hotel, it can book me um, uh, restaurant, or it can book me uh, Uber or the different kind of uh, weather services, it can provide me everything there. Now, then, as I was saying, uh, I have connected it to my backend services. Now, let's go and see within this APG itself, uh, wh how, what kind of services or functionalities APG is providing me here to make my interaction with my chatbot much more easier. As you can see, by default, APG is coming in with a lot of uh, uh, policies. So within APG, there is a concept of creating proxies. And in those proxies, you get access to uh, request flow and response flow, and you go and add policies there. So these are the policies which are uh, atomic unit of uh, uh, implementation which you do. Uh, so as you can see here, at the first step, I am checking uh, uh, API key, whether my chatbot is actually uh, allowed to make call to this API. So it's going to verify if there is a API key in the request header, You and you are uh, free to use uh, any other kind of uh, authentication. If you want to do OAuth based authentication or scope based authentication, you can use uh, uh, utilize that as well. Then I'm also uh, putting some uh, spike arrest uh, because what I want to do, even though I have a WAF layer in front of my API uh, or APG, I'm still adding this uh, uh, spike arrest policies or quota policies within my uh, proxy 
because it's always better to have security in uh, depth. So at front layer also, at my APG layer also, and also it gives me capability of uh, maybe in future, I want to do some monetization of my APIs. In those scenarios also, the spike arrest or quota uh, policies will help me to maintain a different uh, um, a service tier, which I want to provide, maybe uh, gold, silver, or diamond, uh, based on that, how many requests uh, somebody can make. Now, then there is another policy as an example uh, I want to show you here is uh, parsing Dialogflow request. So Dialogflow talks in a particular way. It will make a request in a particular way. So it will send you a data and there are a lot of elements within that request uh, there. So if I wanted and uh, to uh, parse that request manually, there will be a lot of uh, uh, effort required. Maybe I have to go through that uh, parsing of the whole JSON request, which is coming in, then get some data out of it. But as you can see, what IPG is doing here is it is providing me an out of box policy, which will give me access to all the elements within that uh, uh, request itself. And then I can do different stuff like uh, add users, do some, um, um, interaction to uh, um, any other services, maybe you can do some service call out, do some orchestration or hub spoke kind of implementation, and then uh, some imp implement my business logic. And then I can very simply use another policy, which is just sending my response back to um, uh, the caller or the dialogue flow uh, in a particular format with, in which it expects it. So as you can see, it is providing a lot of, uh, IPG is providing a lot of different policies. And just as an example, I want to show you, there are a lot of them. Uh, um, out of the box, we support uh, uh, traffic management or security, uh, OAuth, uh, JWT tokens, or you want to pass JSON to XML. Maybe you want to expose some SOAP service, which is behind um, like legacy services, uh, which is behind uh, uh, IPG. So IPG can talk JSON to your caller and uh, in a SOAP uh, uh, format to your uh, backend services. You can have monetization limit checks. And then um, if in a scenario where uh, some kind of policy is not enough for you, you are able to create some extensions. You can write some Java um, um, uh, code or you can write some JavaScript code or Python or uh, uh, different kind of uh, languages we support. And if at all you don't like all that, you can anytime go to uh, use Google's cloud functions, which is our serverless uh, implementation. And you can call cloud functions from APG itself. So within because APG is able to run within the scope of Google Cloud, it is able to connect to any services within Google Cloud uh, in a seamless uh, RFC 1918 uh, uh, IP address space. Um, and from there, it is able to um, use service accounts or the identity which uh, uh, Google Cloud use to natively connect to different services within Google Cloud itself. So you have capability of doing that as well. And at the end, uh, I already showed parsing dialogue flow and setting dialogue flow response. So this is a few things which you can do. Not only that, within Apigee itself, you have uh, capability of uh, creating developer programs like uh, creating um, um, uh, developer portals uh, where custom, uh, your developers can come in and interact with you. You can have monetization. You can create portals here. Um, uh, for your APIs, you can bundle them in different products. So uh, we think of uh, APIs as a bundled product where you can connect them and use them um, because you can have different proxies. So this is where thinking about outside in approach comes in because you may have different services which you have created as a proxy and a service. But think of how a caller or the API consumer is going to come in and call and make, uh, because he might be coming from a mobile service or he may um, using um, as a, a whole journey of uh, user interaction is happening with that. So um, you can create different products and where you can combine different proxies and control the scope of that proxy itself. Maybe you just want to uh, expose some read uh, uh, APIs on, 
there should not be any post or uh, put or uh, anything else on delete so you can control what kind of apis you are exposing so let's go to this api bank product so as you can see i am by default exposing everything you can uh, control so let's me go and click here if i add an operation so here you can see i can control the methods which i want to expose or the path within my um, proxy itself, uh, which I want to expose. So you have a lot of freedom of uh, uh, using uh, this. Now, uh, as we are coming to the end, so I will go back to this. So now the main point is how do you get access to everything? And uh, is there some uh, free access available where you can go and try it out? So whatever I was doing, so Dialogflow also has some free uh, uh, evolution where you can go and try it out. And similar to that, Apigee also provides uh, uh, easy access eval environment where you can provision, uh, if you have a GCP project uh, with the, uh, if you go to Google Cloud and create a free account, uh, Google Cloud will give you $300 of credit, which you can use and uh, uh, to create an uh, APG eval uh, environment. So what it means uh, basically is we will provide you a free APG organization similar to this. It will be an eval environment. It will be uh, valid for 60 days. And you can, <clears throat> uh, you can basically try uh, everything out. So you want to create a proxy, you want to connect to some uh, Google Cloud uh, services, or, uh, or if you want to, try out integration. So integration is where we have this connector kind of uh, um, uh, thinking where maybe you have Salesforce running, you want to connect to Salesforce, but you do not want to talk to Salesforce in Salesforce way, right? So um, uh, because it, it talks in a um, uh, uh, different way. So um, we provide um, connectors for this. Let me show you one example. Uh, okay, let's see this. So connectors are the concept of an IPES solution. What it gives is it, this connector is directly going to connect to any service and it is going to abstract away necessity of talking and converting information uh, in, in uh, and what you can do, you can just configure it, give, okay, this is my endpoint or my Salesforce uh, uh, domain. This is my authentication profile, use this information go and capture any CDC uh, change which is happening on Salesforce. Or it could be your send this data to my SQL server or uh, send this data to my PubSub uh, implementation. So uh, you can try this integration in Google uh, Apigee's eval environment. You can uh, activate it and see how these uh, integrations also work. And you will also be able to create uh, uh, portals or API products or uh, create some reports, API monitoring, you want to see how your timeline is working, what kind of metrics you can do, and you can want to create some custom reports, you will be able to get some instances where APG is running um, highly available within APG scope also, or uh, if you want to take it to multi-region, you will be able to do those things uh, also and try it out. So, and then, if you're not a uh, fan of a UI based uh, uh, creation or uh, you want to get your hands dirty and do some command line provisioning or do some uh, Terraform modules. So we have uh, um, uh, all the availability of different services which are available, uh, which you can use and utilize to uh, build all these things and do a similar kind of uh, uh, implementation or a demo, which I did, which didn't work, but Essentially, you can create something like this and try it out and uh, call your uh, APG or API management platform and uh, interact with your backend services, provide and send response back to your uh, Dialogflow implementation or your chatbot. So, um, yes, I think I'm just going to give it a last try and see if it works. If it doesn't, we will close the session. Let's see. So I am almost at the end. So I, uh, you, okay. So let's give it a last try. Hopefully it will work. If it doesn't, we are going to close the session, right? Cool. All right. Getting the test version of Apigee Bank. Hi, how can I help you today? 
I want to go to Dubai. It's not able to understand me. Nice. Here oh. are some options Yay. from Google Flights, your usual booking site. Option one, onward, Emirates Airline on the 28th of June midnight, return on the 30th of June morning. Option two, onward, British Airlines on the 28th of June night, return on the 30th of June. So as you can see here, what it did, it went to my Apigee's API management uh, layer. And from there, it went to my backend service. And backend service gave me options that uh, I have two options of going um, from Emirates Airlines or maybe British Airlines on these, these, these dates, and then uh, I can come back. And then I'm going to see option option one. Let's see if it books me, option one. Can you say that again? Huh. First. Sorry, could you say that again? Let's try again. I want to go to Dubai. Please take me to Dubai. I think it knows that I am in, nice. in UK right Here now. Nice. Here are some options from Google Flights, your usual booking site. Option one, onward, Emirates Airline on the 28th of June midnight, return on the 30th of June morning. Option two, onward, British Airlines on the 28th of June night, return on the 30th of June. Okay, here's okay. your itinerary. The total cost comes to 150,000 Indian rupees. Should I book it? Yes. Awesome, I'll get that booked. Should we move on to hotels now? Okay, so here you can see that it is able to uh, detect that I'm going somewhere and I need uh, uh, flight sure. booking, I need you hotel seem to booking. You frequent Hyatt group of hotels. And it Do also... you want to book Grand Hyatt Dubai from Hotels.com? It's so, six kilometers from your workplace and the cost comes up to 500 British pounds per night inclusive of breakfast. The total amounts to 1,000 British pounds for two days. So it's able to detect that uh, um, and get my um, journey history previously that I stay in Hayat a lot. So it's able to uh, give me an option. So I'm just going to say yes. Done. Also, enjoy free refreshments on us when you arrive at the hotel. Okay, let's move on. Do you want me to schedule an Uber pickup for you to get to the Heathrow International Airport? So now uh, it's also suggesting me that uh, uh, first it gave me a free refreshment option because good customer service. And it also provided me an option to uh, go from my home to Heathrow Airport so that I can take my flight. I'm just going to say yes again. And it's going to book an uh, Uber pickup Great. for me. Also, since you're a foodie, enjoy 20% off when you use your Apogee bank card at Domino's Pizza and McDonald's at the airport departures area. Okay, now let's move on to the final step. We recommend that you take the Dubai Metro to get to the city. Do you want me to pre-order an Dubai Metro Null card so that you can pick it up? Yes. So as you can see, uh, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, awesome. It's all done. I have sent you a mail with details about the whole trip. Finally, just before you go, make sure to pack some summer cloths as it might get hot in Dubai. Have a safe trip and if you need any assistance, you know how to reach me. Bye. Okay, so uh, you saw the whole interaction and uh, finally demo gods were happy to me. Uh, so I was able to show you the whole end-to-end uh, -end flow. So we already saw the whole interaction, how it works and how it can be controlled. Um, so I think uh, we are at the end of this session. Um, please uh, have a look at uh, uh, APG's provisioning wizard or look at Dialogflow and then uh, try to build uh, this whole end-to-end uh, -end flow by yourself also. Um, so I wish you all a very good luck and uh, thank you for joining this session. And it was really nice to speak to everyone and uh, hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.